This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. The information presented on this program is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information presented does not create any type of relationship between the hosts and guests and the listening audience. Please consult an appropriate professional for guidance about your concerns. On Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, you get information about foods you should eat to stay in good health and tips on how to stay active. I'm Josie Bidwell, host of Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, an associate professor of preventive medicine at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Listen to the show every Monday at 11 or subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy with your preferred podcasting app. Okie dokie, folks, welcome back to Horticulture Spell to Rush again. I'm ready to chat with you about whatever's on your gardening mind. That's all me and Java are doing for the next hour. We don't have an agenda other than to listen and see what's going on. And if there's some things you want to chat about, argue about, pass along to other people. Maybe you've got questions of the things you don't understand out in the yard like all those weird mushrooms popping up right now and there's some weird mushrooms popping up out there whatever it is it's on your guarding mind this is an opportunity to chat with somebody who doesn't know it all who knows a lot but doesn't know it all and is okay with not knowing it because other folks are going to chime in and help us all out and most important not going to try to sell you anything i don't i'm not driven by advertisements or sponsors or anything like that i'm just a gardener a retired horticulturist uh java it's good to be back on the um, not out in a tent full of people and plants and stuff like last week at the Southport Flower Show. Yeah, I hear you say it's good to be stationary but I know you had a good time last week though. It was really, really good. I mean, you know, I go to a lot of flower shows all over the United States and England and went over to Floriad uh, in the Netherlands, which is once every 10 years. This is my third one. And uh, it's good to see interesting stuff but it's also really, really good to see plants that we're familiar with unfamiliar plants they're cool i take pictures don't want to try to go them in mississippi because it ain't the same but it's good to see a lot of our plants our native plants being used as beautiful but regular just ordinary garden plants in other places where they don't see them as native plants or roadside weeds they just see them as good garden plants and that's always that's been real real good anyway had a really good time i also met one of my heroes you know it's kind of weird being a media person and having media heroes but uh there's a couple of guys who are they're chefs they're 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 really they're best-selling authors they lecture all over the place a couple of guys though they've got long hair and they ride motorcycles we're talking about you know they're in their 60s but they ride motorcycles and with a van following them around that's got cooking equipment and they go all over the place, including well, they're 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 from Northern England, but they've been all over Europe. They've been to Memphis. They've been to New Orleans. They've been down through Mississippi, meeting and talking with and cooking local food. They're called the Hairy Bikers, and I finally got and, and I like them hot Java because they're not pretentious. They don't talk lofty. They laugh a lot. They drop stuff on the floor. They do everything that I do as a garden variety. They're gar- they're garden variety cooks. Like, I'm a garden variety gardener, and they're real. I finally got to meet one of the hairy bikers, and I introduced myself to the hairy biker, meet the hairy gardener. <laughs> I look. I just looked them up. Um, uh, fellas by the name of Dave, David Meyer, Cy King, and just as, yep. just like you said, they are some long haired, bearded biker types. But like you said, you know, <laughs> John, you know, you could see me standing by both of them. We all, we look alike. We're not pretty. We got long hair. We're older. But the most important thing is 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 I try like them to connect with with real people. Not trying to you know win the great chef awards. They cook. When they were in Mississippi, they learned how to cook tamales, you know. And uh, you know, I, and so I identify with people who are populist, and I'm a populist gardener slash horticulture. So, anyway, I hope we get some calls today and chat about stuff. But I want to ask you something: How are y'all dealing with this water? You getting any water in the house? No. Well, for thank thankfully, um, around my house, we did not get any water. But you know, we are actually 
preparing um, for the Pearl River to crest on, I think, Tuesday. And it's a lot of voluntary. And then I believe they're going to push for some mandatory evacuations. So it's it's real serious in the in the Jackson area with the, the, the Pearl River, Ross Barnett Reservoir. It's real serious, man. We got like over 15, between five reports, five to 15 inches of rain in like three days. Wow. You know, San Diego only gets about 10 inches a year. But either way, I hope everybody does well. I hope everybody else hunkers down. I hope that my clearing out my gutters back in the spring is going to keep my, my, my shack from flooding. But anyway, that's okay. I'm going to be back this coming next week and be in the studio. If I have to take a canoe job, I'm going to come <laughs> see you in person. Well, remember 2020, we had a big flood, and it was in this area. So I don't know. You may have to break out the canoe. That's okay. Hey, and by the way, I got an email from someone that's really funny. Uh, they sent a picture of their bird feeder out in their yard. It's been raining so much that the sunflower seed in their bird feeder has sprouted. They got sunflowers growing out of a bird feeder. So, uh, And I know a lot of people can see earthworms on the sidewalk, but also they're going to be getting these millipedes. Some people call them centipedes, but they're little flat millipedes looking for – for, for dry places, they're out in the lawn. They eat thatch. They don't sting. They don't bite. They eat dead grass leaves and leaves and stuff. But when it gets wet, they're gonna start coming up on the porch, uh, in the uh, in the carport, maybe even in the house. Don't freak out. Just sweep them back. You know, get your broom, sweep them, toss them back out in the yard. They're they're like big roly polies. They don't really hurt anything. And if you crush them, whew, they smell bad. If you spray them, it's gonna take a long time for them to die, and more are gonna keep coming. So just Get a broom, get a dustpan, and just when you see them, sweep them, toss them out in the yard. That's the easiest thing to do. If you kill them, you got to sweep them up anyway, so just toss them out in the yard. Don't worry about them. Uh, meanwhile, let's uh, let's go up to Tupelo up in northeast Mississippi and see what Daryl is up to. Daryl, thank you for calling. What's up? I'm sorry, Felder. It's Gerald. I, I, instead Darryl. of Daryl, it's Gerald. <laughs> Oh, I see. The, the, I see the next call says Gerald from Tupelo, so you must have written that twice. Gerald, what's up? Oh, okay. I just uh, enjoy your show, and I was wanting to ask you about, you know, some plants uh, that we normally plant during the summer. I know it's a little bit late for this question, but um, right. usually uh, I try, you know, to get plants to put in pots beside the driveway at home in, in the Tupelo area. And what I've noticed is I was able to get tiger lilies and some of the more colorful things, but I haven't been seeing those lately, and I ended up just getting some geraniums this year, uh, yeah. and which uh, they've done pretty well as I've watered them uh, quite a bit, you know, through the hot summer. But I was just right. wondering, you know, why why I'm not seeing some of the tiger lilies and possibly in other uh, more colorful uh, things that I've been seeing. Well, it, it, first of all, his, you didn't ask this question. Let me throw this out. Geraniums are actually. You know, they're almost like succulents. Uh, they don't really like a lot of water. It's real easy to overwater. You can actually take them out of a pot, shake the potting soil off, hang them upside down, and let them dry. And th- five months later, stick them back in a pot, and they'll sprout back out. So so don't overwater the geraniums. They don't like the middle of the summer, and they don't like the middle of the winter. They like a long, cool spell like you find in the Mediterranean or California. So uh, if you can just get them through the summertime, you can prune them back a little bit. They'll sprout back out in September and bloom great until a hard freeze. So keep keep that in mind. Baby them over the winter. I mean, over the summer, keep them from freezing over the winter time, and they will do best in the fall and the spring. Anyway, to answer your question, tiger lilies did fine, but it was a month ago, month and month month and a half ago. Tiger lilies, I think of as June and July, maybe it's early August. Um, so if you want things in pots, it's better to choose something that either has a, a long season of foliage or flowers for a long time. I'm thinking stuff like uh, periwinkle or, or salvias or, you know, things like that. But, you know, things that, that bloom a long time or have foliage, or better yet, mix two or three different things in one big pot so that something is out there all the time. But tiger lilies are kind of a short-term, middle-of-the-summer thing. Okay. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, good. Hey. And, and by the way, if you're interested in that, I, I, I have big pots in my front yard because I'm gone for weeks, sometimes months of the time. And I found out that having a little bit bigger pot with two or three things in it uh, really works well. And I found out over the years things that will bloom from spring until frost with no care 
at all other than just occasional water. I even grow them in, in a pot in the back of my pickup truck. So, you know, just look, look for things that bloom for a long, long time that don't need a whole bunch of water, and you'll have plenty to look at. Anyway, good luck on it, Gerald. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. All righty, Java. By the way, there's a couple of things. I, I, I try not to give people unsolicited advice, but I'm going to because I'm a gardener and that's where my mother raised me. Um, but if you're the type of folks who like to fertilize your grass, now is the time. You know, we like to fertilize after it starts greening in the spring, You know, usually April. I don't, I don't know any conditions under which a lawn should be fertilized before April. And you want to fertilize in the summer Given the grass time to green to, to to take the fertilizer up to use it and then still settle down before fall, the recommendation is get your fall feeding done by around now, towards the end of August, first part of September. So if you if you want to put a winterized route or a second summer feeding, this is the weekend or after it stops raining to do it. Go ahead and get it done. Don't don't put it off. Um, and also, if you've got potted plants that have been watered a lot all summer. Uh, watering washes fertilizer away. So if you use a t- slow-release fertilizer, any kind of fertilizer, I want to give you potted plants and any other flowers that are watered a lot, a little extra fertilizer, because we still got two, two months or more of, of, of good growing weather ahead of us. So fertilize your grass now if you're going to. If you got plants that get watered a lot, especially potted plants, give a little shot of fertilizer. That'll help a whole bunch. We've got a lot of time to talk with you about your gardening. That's what me and Java are here for. MPB uh, wants to put gardeners and cooks and repair folks and automobile folks with local experts. This is a chance to call and just yak about what's going on in your garden. I know it's really soggy wet right now, and um, a lot of people are in between things. It's, it's really, it really is too late to plant summer vegetables for a fall harvest, things like tomatoes and peppers. And it's hard to find those plants anyway. May have time to get some squash in or something like that. But it's the time to start planting cool season vegetables. I'm talking about lettuce and mustard and carrots and beets, uh, cabbage and, and uh, uh, broccoli and those kind of things. Um, you may have to protect the, the, some of the, the plants like broccoli and cabbage plants from hot, hot sun for a couple of weeks. But it's easy to do. Just get you a branch off a shrub, stick it in the ground like an umbrella, and it'll just shade them during the middle of the day, and that'll help a lot. But uh, if you can get around to it, if your garden's ready, think about getting uh, some of the fall stuff into the ground so, because we have plenty of growing season uh, ahead for especially things like lettuce and leafy greens. Hey, let's slide up to Oxford now and uh, see what's going on. Chico, how you doing, man? Long time no see. Hey, good morning, y'all. Uh, Felder, your, your caller from Tupelo reminded me that two weeks ago today you mentioned something uh, about Snuffy Smith. Yeah. And it, it, it made me think of a, of, a, of a horticulture question I've got for you about that, but I wanted to make sure that you do know the Northeast Mississippi connection to Snuffy Smith. No, I, I didn't. I thought Snuffy Smith was like up in the Ozarks or something. Well, that's true, but, uh, you know, Fred Laswell is the originator and uh, writer of the of the strip, Snuffy Smith, Barney Google and Snuffy Smith, but it was Vance. Know. Yeah, it was Vance Bristow of Tupelo, Mississippi, who was the artist and inker who worked for Fred Laswell, and that was Vance I Bristow's know. art that you saw out there. That is so wild. I had no idea about that at all. He must have had some hillbilly relatives because he nailed a lot of that stuff. Oh, he's got a hillbilly son named Robert, who is a much beloved cartoonist in Tupelo right now. <laughs> wow, wow, that's wild, man! I appreciate that. Uh, esoteric is what drives, makes, makes, keep things interesting. Well, what, uh, well my question, know? my question is, and you know, you've also mentioned Pogo in the past. Oh yeah. So I wondered, do you, as a horticulturist, when you're perusing these comic strips, as I do, have you ever noticed? flowers or plants or whatnot that are not drawn correctly or that you've noticed that like this artist really did a good job on that yeah i, I do a, a whole lot you know and uh you know pogo uh, and, and this, is, this is not about gardening but but pogo was really well drawn folks who don't know what it is the, the strip goes back 1950s 60s maybe early 70s and uh and it was it featured creatures who lived in a swamp uh, and they did a lot of really nice little detail. They got the Spanish moss and the trees and stuff right. Uh, I but, thought you know, so too. Like, 
Yeah, so anyway, and, and I, I've seen quite a few that were really, really interesting. But most of the time, it's just I'm, I'm always looking for, for uh, just the, the humor connection, just the humor connection. Because there's so much about humans. Uh, gardening is a human activity, gardening and cooking. And there's a lot of, a lot of funny stuff in both of those. Well, I, I sure do appreciate you in Java. Thanks, y'all. You bet. Thanks for calling, guy. Pogo, he, we have met the enemy, and he is us. Uh, let's go down to Mandeville, Louisiana. Pig, how are you this morning? What's going on in North Shore? Hey, how you doing, Felder? You came and, and spoke to my Keep, Keep Mandeville Beautiful group years ago, but I still love you. Thank you, thank you. I'm <laughs> going to be doing a talk uh, some sometime around there. Uh, let me see, I'm doing a, a program uh, well, I'll I tell you, wh- while you're talking, I'll look it up on my calendar. I'm going to be down in your neck of the woods, uh, I want to say, in the next month or so. Yay. Glad. So what well, you we got to hear? Well, what's up? Well, what's up? Well, I've got, I've got um, some walking bamboo. It's actually come from across the street backyard, under the ground, and over to my – and it's and it's getting – into, and I, I really need to stop it because I can see that it's going to be a problem. I've got clump bamboo, which is wonderful for me, but this running bamboo, how on earth can you get rid of it? You tell that the, the, the ground cover kind or the big tall kind? No, the big tall kind. Yeah. It's really it's, something. It's, okay. For, for one thing, a lot of people say it's impossible. It's not. But keep in mind that it doesn't have really deep roots, but it's got underground rhizomes, sort of like stems right under the ground yeah if you don't if you don't get all of those yeah so you can cut it down you kill all you want but if you don't get all those it's going to sprout back out so the easiest way to to me and I, and i've been dealing with it for a long time would be to over the winter time just cut down all that you that, that you need to just cut it to the ground and you know because it's easy and you don't have to worry about snakes and all that kind of stuff and then let the new growth come up in the spring let it sprout back out, and when it gets about knee high, somewhere between knee high and waist high, you can spray it then. Uh, and there's several things that'll that'll kill it. There's uh, uh, any kind of true grass killers, uh, things that are grass only killers, because bamboo is grass or Roundup. But if you spray the new growth when it's big enough to be sending food back down the rhizomes, that'll take it out. That's about the best time to do it too. That sounds like a great idea, but mostly what I use in my yard is uh, 75% vinegar to kill weeds. Do you think that would work? No. Well, no. I, I, I know for a fact it will not. All the vinegar does okay. is burn, burn plant to the ground. It, it doesn't kill them. It just burns them. If it's a, an easy plant that grows from a seed like crabgrass, yeah, it'll kill that. But nutgrass, Bermuda grass, bamboo, any kind of perennial, vinegar only burns it to the ground. And by the way, vinegar... Even though it's a natural product, it's still acetic acid. It's a chemical. It just happens to be a natural chemical. Salt will kill plants, but it'll kill everything else out there. But the safest, environmentally sound, quickest, most effective way is to use something that kills things, roots and all. And you can feel pretty good as long as you don't get the Roundup on other plants. It doesn't kill trees through through roots or through uh, uh, the bark or anything. I- I'm really sure about this. I- if there was something better to recommend... I absolutely would. Well, I know you would, and I'm on it. It's going to happen, and I'll let you know if it okay. works. And, 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 and by the way, I just checked. It's going to be October 25th. I'm going to be at St. Pa- Tammany Parish Master Gardens, Mandeville, um, oh, October yeah. 25th. Yeah. And uh, P. Allen Smith okay. is going to be there, and Dan Gill is going to be there. So you got three fun guys, all different approaches. Yeah. Oh, great. That sounds wonderful, Felder. Thanks for talking right. to me. You bet. Thank Bye. you for calling. See you, Peg. Okay, now let's go to Sandtown U in Madison. Hey, how are you this morning? Good. I'm good. Good, good you- morning, and I enjoy your show. Um, I have a question about mango. You know, mango is very close to our culture. I grew up in Calcutta. Now in, right. I live in central Mississippi, and I had the sweetest mango, which I planted three years back. So now yeah. it's six feet, and it has survived. You know, I bring it in during the winter. But I'm wondering, right. what can I do as a long-term plan? Uh, well, you're going to have to keep it in a container because it'll freeze to death outside. 
Uh, but what what you can do, and, and a lot of people do uh, citrus this way also, is you put it in, you know, find the biggest pot that you can that you can handle, maybe one with little wheels on the bottom or something. But the bigger the mm-hmm. pot, the better it's going to grow, uh, the less you're going to have to water and fertilize. But you can also prune that into a small branchy bush, cut the tall stuff out, uh, and then what whatever's left, cut those branches back a little bit and let them branch out and grow it as a mango bush instead of a mango tree, and that okay. makes it easier to bring okay. in. That makes it a lot easier. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll try okay. it, and I really enjoy your show. Thank you. Good luck. Hey, let us know. Have you gotten any mangoes off of it? Well, not yet, but uh, that's yeah. the other question. Uh, how long do you think I need to wait until? Did Did you grow this from a seed, or did you buy a little plant? No, I got it from a seed, and it's the third yeah. year, so it's three years now, about six yeah, feet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, plant, plants that grow from seed have to go through a juvenile phase before they get to what mm-hmm. we call fruiting or flower maturity. If you grow one from a cutting, it's a mature plant already, so it might take another couple of years. But again, you can cut that thing off to, to three feet tall, and it will bush out, and then you can cut those branches, they'll bush out, and have a mango bush instead of a mango tree. Six feet, it's just going to get bigger and bigger if you don't prune it, so you might as well go ahead and do it now. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, now slide over towards Jackson. To see what Emily's up to. Emily, how are you doing this morning? Are you getting enough rain? Oh yeah, we're getting a, a lot of rain. Um, now I wanted to comment on the running bamboo situation. Um, so about a decade ago, we bought a house in Bell Haven in the fall, and uh, really, really enjoyed our backyard. But come springtime, we realized that we had running bamboo coming up in the backyard. So I looked up how to get rid of running bamboo, and the best answer that I came across was sell your house in the fall. There you go. Wait, wait, oh, sell, sell you. <laughs> that's, that's like what I heard about how to, how to deal with hurricanes in Florida is to get a, a month's worth of medicine, a month's worth of water, a month's worth of food, a month's worth of, of a clothes. You put it in your car, and you drive to Indiana till till hurricane season is over. <laughs> but anyway, Absolutely. That's, that's, so what, what you got? What's uh, oh? Was that it? That's it. You have a good day. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, bamboo. It can be tough. It can be really tough. Java, I get so many calls about this. A neighbor planted bamboo, and it sends these ro- woody little stems under the ground, and they shoot up. And if you pull them up, more just keep coming up. So sooner or later, you got to either pull it up or just break down and spray it. That's like we have some around. bamboo here. Um. On the um on the campus around the MPB studio, we have a, 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 a nice bush of yeah. bamboo. <laughs> Matter of fact, that, that that's actually where I get my my pea sticks. You know, I've got a little raised bed garden, and, and I make a little little frame over my peas and my beans to help grow. And, and I get them from down down there behind the the uh, where the uh, the maintenance shed down there. Yeah, but um, let's let's slide to Hattiesburg and uh, speak with Lisa. I appreciate it, Java. Thank you, man. Lisa, what's going on? Good morning. I bought some uh, lemon trees that were very small little lemon trees, and they're not growing tall. They look like they want to turn into a bush. Is there a way that I could get them to grow um, into a tree shape rather than a bush? Uh, Yeah, it's called directional pruning. What what you do is uh, keep in mind that, that all new growth comes on the end of the current new growth. So if you'll go in and thin out some of the, the little limbs and then thin out some of the branches and only leave the ones that are going up and out in the direction you want, if you just cut the others off without leaving stubs, cut them as if they were never there, just flush, uh, then the energy that would have gone to them will go to what's left. And, and in other words, if you have four branches, you cut two off, the two that are left are going to grow twice as fast. So, so just oh. just cut off all but the ones that are growing in the direction you want. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, appreciate it. Thank. Oh, I want to ask you this: Are these out in the yard or are they in pots? They're in pots near my okay. Uh, garage. Okay, but you're going to bring them in in the winter or, 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 or somehow cover them, bring them in the garage or something. The reason I'm saying you might want to keep them as bushes, but still thin out some of the branches, some of the limbs. You may want to keep them as a general bush shape. But without as many twigs and branches. In other words, just thin some of it out. But down the road, you're going to be glad it's kind of a, a, a bushy instead of a tree thing because when it comes time to bring it in, it's going to be a booger bear. 
So I would just thin out some of the growth and leave some of it, but always keep it small enough to bring in. My next-door neighbor has a bunch of um, orange trees that he's planted. And in our zone, I didn't think they had a chance of making it through the winters, but they grow. Now, of course, in the winter, they can freeze, and you can see that the leaves look very sad. But yeah. these trees have grown. I mean, they're almost as tall as his house is now. And and they're actually spreading out, and, and the, the branches are have oranges that are hanging over on my side of the fence now, which I love that. But yeah. um, it surprised me, so if that's what gave me hope that I could grow these lemons. Well, I, I want to make a couple of comments. First, first is... The, the answer to that is so far they're doing okay. There's a reason we don't have a citrus industry in Mississippi, even on the coast, because it's a real gamble. Uh, second of all, it may be that the stuff she planted actually died and the rootstock sprouted out. There's, there's a type of a citrus rootstock that's called a, uh, it's called a citrumello. It looks like a big lemon, but the flesh inside is like a grapefruit, and it's hardy. It's hard even up in the Tennessee, but it's the rootstock on uh, that they graft onto. So if it's got good lemons, it's just a matter of time before something's going to happen, unless global warming helps us all out. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's just going to be a matter of time. So enjoy it, and enjoy it, okay. hers. Those that are on your side are yours. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> you bet. Appreciate it. I got a little poignant tune. I'm gonna be back in Mississippi. Been over in England since the first part of June. Run out of flower shows. Run out of gardens. Run out of botanic gardens. I need to take care of my yard. I need to to visit my family. Got to play with my little granddaughter who hasn't seen her grandpa in in uh, three months. So uh, we're gonna be back in the studio live in Mississippi Public Broadcasting next week. Anyway, no, I'm looking forward to getting back. Um, my garden, I got my daughter to check on it. She said, everything's okay. She said, some of my best plants look like weeds. And I'm thinking, they are weeds. I grow weeds on purpose. I'm <laughs> as for as the Native, Native Plant Society. We don't call those weeds. We call them cultivated wildflowers. So anyway, I know I'm going to have to do some cleaning up to do. But looking forward to because when I get back uh, next week, it's time to start planting uh, lettuce and broccoli and cabbage, but also a little bit early. The garden centers may not have them, but this is the season to start getting ready, if not actually planting, things like pansies, violas, snapdragons. Those things love it in the cool weather. They don't like hot, hot weather. They don't like cold, cold weather. But we can have some incredible stuff. What I like to do is is get a, a, a big pot and put some big daffodils kind of down deep, cover them with some dirt, plant some little daffodils, cover that with some potting soil, and then plant pansies of the violas on top, maybe stick a kale in the pot. So I have a combination, sort of like a smorgasbord in a pot. So you can take an area on your front porch, corner of your patio, out in the middle of the yard, down by the mailbox, and plant a combination of these things, sort of layer them with big balls, little balls, small spreading annuals, some tall cold weather annuals like kale. Real easy to do. And, by the way, this is something that kids can do. So, um, anyway, if you've got some other ideas about things to be planting this time of year, we've got plenty of time to yak about whatever's on your mind. Uh, I did mention uh, when I was talking with some folks about pruning uh, her her citrus plant and also the guy's, um, I forgot what the tropical plant was now, mango. Yeah, you wanted to grow some mangoes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of, you know, spring blooming and winter blooming plant is, I wouldn't do any pruning on those except to remove extra branches or cluttered stuff. But if you want to prune shrubs, generic shrubs like, like uh, hollies and things like that, this is sort of the last time of year when you can prune those pretty good bit so they have time for the new growth to come out and toughen up before winter. So if you've got some hollies that are overgrown, uh, generic stuff, you can go ahead and prune those back right now. But uh, I wouldn't prune any spring-blooming things like azaleas or blueberries uh, for city. I wouldn't prune any of those. Uh, it's too late for them to make flower buds before fall. So uh, anyway, let's slide down to Hattiesburg, Marianne. You know, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods in uh, about three or four weeks. I'm doing a program in Petal on September 24th. Me and my pickup truck are going to be in Petal talking about gardens. <coughs> So what you got going on? I just wanted to share my experience with bamboo. I did this in Mandeville, and I now live in Hattiesburg, and I did it here, too, for a privacy fence. I planted 
green, I think it's called green goddess bamboo. It's the clumping yeah. kind. It doesn't rot. Right, right, right. And uh, it was probably, I planted 24 of them. I got them from that little bamboo farm in uh, Brookhaven. Right. But, okay, so they were only about a foot high, and now they're as tall as the house, and they're beautiful. And they don't, they don't run. Right. It's just right. that it's a clump. There's so many different kinds of bamboo I found out, and this may not be as pretty as some of the exotic ones, but it doesn't run. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was I was my great grandmother was a horticulture, and she lived across the street from me up in the Delta, and she had a clump of it of, of the clump for me bamboo, and like you say, it's eighteen twenty feet tall, but even though it's been out there for way more than half a century. It's probably not more than 10 feet across the whole clump, and we're talking about half a century of growth. It just spreads real slow, but that's a good tip. If people like bamboo, the clump forming, now it may not be hardy up in Memphis. Sometimes they get winter damage, but it usually comes back. Anyway, a really good tip, Marianne. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. All righty, folks. Uh, I am going to be in Petal, Mississippi, September 24th. September 27th, I'm going to be at the Louisville Extension Office. Jim McAdory is, is having me up do, doing a program with his Master Gardeners and the uh, general public. I'm going to be in, uh, uh, oh, Louisiana. Let me see. Going to be in Kosciuszko and uh, Lowndes County, Holly Springs, Brandon. Anyway, got a lot of stuff like this. If you've got a library group or a Master Gardener group, or a church group, or some folks who would like to have me come up and give a program. I'd love to. I do stuff like that all the time. Get in my pickup truck, sometimes my Jeep, and drive all over the place and give fun little programs. I do that because it's what we do best. And We're going to have to um, pull back out Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere, man. Oh, <laughs> you know, you know, it, it is really it is really interesting. I thought about doing that. I mean, I've been to Itawamba. I've been to Iuka. There's got all in Mississippi. There's got to be a tomb there somewhere. And before you left, didn't you complete the eighty county, eighty two counties? Um, yeah, I, I, I was in uh, Itawamba County. Was the last of the eighty two counties for me to give a lecture in, and, and I did this, the program twice. Once in the the evening, once the next morning. We had big big crowds both times. So anyway, no, I've been. I guess you could say I've been everywhere now. I haven't given a talk, and it's a queen of county because they don't have a place to, to have a talk. You have to go to to uh, uh, Sharkey County next door to the library to have a talk. But other than that, I, I've been through there. So, Java, let me ask you something. Back in the spring, y'all planted some stuff in a pot. Bet it ain't still there. No, it is still there. <laughs> that's a strong, that's a strong man plant that you gave us because. Um, it's holding on. It has its ebb and flows. I will say that sometimes it, yeah. <laughs> it, it like shrinks, and then next thing you know, it sprouted back up. So the kids, they are, they do enjoy it. They point it out. So yeah, appreciate it. Well, Thanks. Well, this this fall, I want to see. I want you to bring the kids over, uh, and and I, I get them to help me put together a pot full of stuff for them that'll do great over the winter time too. Uh, we'll do a you know that, you know sneak them away from mom, and we'll just have a lot of fun with them. Well, as long as you don't mind them running around, we can put the uh, put the blanket over the the mannequin. <laughs> oh, there, yeah, yeah, the mannequin. She got a cape on. When when kids come over, I I, I put a cape on her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, oh, and uh, and and by the way, there's a there's a few interesting things going on. I'm trying to remember what one. Oh, what, oh, I'm getting. Uh, I'm doing an experiment, uh, Java, this fall. Uh, you know, you know about clover. It has the white flowers out in the yard. Everybody's always had clover with honeybees and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, they come out with a mini clover. It is the same. It is identical clover, but it's miniature. It gets about a third the size of this. So the leaves are smaller. It's got fewer flowers, and it grows level or just barely above the grass. It doesn't make big clumps. Anyway, the company that that, that came out with this is sending me some seeds to plant. So so uh, you know a lot of a lot of people are tired of trying to spray for the weeds, and they're trying to let wildflowers grow, and they don't. But they want something that looks better than the wildflowers. This little mini clover might might do the trick. We just don't know how well it's going to hold up in our summertime. But anyway, we're looking for ways to help people transition from having a perfect, high maintenance, mow, water, fertilized edge, you know, that, that industrial type of lawn, who would like to have a more relaxed lawn but don't know how to go about it. That's what we're doing. We're looking for plants that you can put out there that you can mow and your grass looks like a lawn, but it's like a lawn before the 1950s when we invented uh, chemical weed killers. Back before the 1950s, 
everybody had all this stuff. And now we're trying to reintroduce some plants that look good, uh, even in suburbia, even possibly even in some of the gated communities. If we could come up with some plants that look like they're supposed to be there, then maybe people start accepting this mow what grows, more environmentally friendly approach towards lawns. So and not, not to say I don't want people to have a pretty lawn, but we want people who don't want to do all that stuff to feel good about what they do. Uh, I know a lot of folks say, well, I don't do social media. I don't do Instagram. I don't do Facebook, whatever. If you get a chance when nobody's looking, when you don't have to tell anybody about this, go online, look up Facebook, and then in the little search box, put Mississippi Gardening. You don't have to join it. We don't have to know you're there. You don't have to tell anybody. But just look at the site called Mississippi Gardening on Facebook. Scroll down and look at some of the stuff. People are showing pictures of, of, uh, of what's going on in their yard, unusual butterflies, interesting things they've seen, flowers that they love to grow, flowers that they are going and like to other, see, see other people doing, things that are going on. And things with what's going on here. And look at the answers from garden variety gardeners as well as horticulturists. I see Gary Bachman there. Uh, I'm on there from time to time. There's just a lot of stuff going on. One of the things that I've been doing every week is I post uh, a few pictures of what I see around my little village in northern England. That's going to come to an end this week. I'm going to start doing stuff about what's going on in my yard. But it's a great little place to hook up with garden variety gardeners, amateur gardeners, Expert gardeners, hardcore gardeners, uh, non-judgmental. Ain't no politics, ain't no religion, ain't no shaming. If you don't like this or that or other, we're okay. Just don't be mean. It's a nice site, Mississippi Gardening, on uh, on Facebook. Just check it out. Um, anyway, we're going to take a, 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 a slide on up to uh, Oxford, go up to Lafayette County, and talk with Jesse. Hey, Jesse, what's going on? Hello. Uh, I had some questions about what to plant this year for the fall, uh, fall gardening and all that. I use uh, raised flower beds, and I try to put uh, organic compost from my goat pen in there. And right. all, But I, I'm new to this gardening and all that because I'm worried about, you know, all the stuff going on and fresh vegetables for my family. And I want to yeah. put stuff in there like cabbage or lettuce and all. I know the previous caller, you said cabbage is the best time to plant is about right now. I try to find out more information about that and using organic uh, compost from my uh, goat pens, like hay and all that other fertilizer. Yeah. Well, well. first of all, let, let me tell you where you can get information that you can have at your fingertips. Mississippi State has a publication on home vegetable gardening. They just redid it, and it is fantastic because it's written – by people from Mississippi about what kinds of things grow here, what varieties, because, you know, you can plant, there, there must be 50 different kinds of carrots, but they don't all do well here. So what kinds of vegetables, the best varieties, and how, how do we grow those kind of plants in Mississippi, not Minnesota or Florida? So it's really good. It's free. If you go to msucares.com. It stands for Mississippi State University, Coordinated Research, whatever. MSUcares.com, they got a gardening publication that's free, it's downloadable, or you might swing by the county extension office on Highway 7 just south of town and pick up a copy. So right off the bat, that is your go-to reference. Uh, but to answer your question directly, uh, things like cabbage, if you plant a dozen cabbage plants this week, you can have a dozen cabbage plants ready to eat all at one time. So, so think of break, taking your beds and breaking them up. Each one is an individual garden. Plant a little cabbage now, a couple of weeks. Plant a little bit more cabbage, a couple of weeks, a little bit more. In other words, whatever you plant, stagger it so you don't have everything at one time. Uh, right now, you can plant lettuces um, uh, that, that produce really, really well from seed real fast. You can put out broccoli and cabbage. There's a plant called kale. It's sort of like collars, but it's better for you. It doesn't take bacon grease to eat it. Uh, but kale will grow and produce all winter long, no matter how cold it gets. See, so there's uh, those kind of things we can be planting now. You can plant garlic in October, just stick clothes in the ground, and each one's going to make a head with cloves of garlic that'll last you all through next year. So, so garlic plant in October, leafy greens right now. Uh, one thing I would avoid uh, doing, Jesse, would be planting a lot of stuff that you can buy cheap, like 
uh, you know, carrots are, are not that cheap, but you can grow carrots, but there's not a, a lot of reason to grow uh, a whole bunch of stuff that you can buy cheaper in a small space. Production, um, uh, uh, nutrients, things like that are more important than just growing something that's popular. So look for things that produce well in a small space. Think about staggering their planting so you don't have to eat them all at once. And certainly think about uh, lettuces and other leafy greens, cabbages, collards, um, uh, kale, things like that. They're really good, and they'll get you through the wintertime. Uh, what about the organic fertilizer, like from your goat pen or rabbit pen or chicken pen to help use for natural fertilizer? Because I don't like putting all the chemical fertilizers in the uh, garden. I try to put that in there and mix it in so uh, yeah. throughout the winter it has time to bleed into the soil so it won't burn the uh, burn the plants yeah, up. Well, okay, well, well, first of all, plants can't tell whether fertilizer is synthetic, uh, chemical, or natural. They absorb things on a molecular level. So whether it's organic or chemical, plants absorb that way. It's not going to poison your plant to use a little bit every now and then. You can overdo it with natural fertilizer. Goat fertilizer, chicken manure, they're pretty strong. If you put too much in there, you can over-fertilize with those just as easily you can over-fertilize with anything. So just add a little bit every now and then. Use a lot of compost, leaves, uh, bark, things like that to fluff up your soil. And, uh, and, 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 and you know, you don't want to use a lot of manure because that's the same thing as over-fertilizing, and it has uh, it, it can cause problems. So nothing wrong with it. I, I actually have written for Organic Gardening Magazine, and I'm, I'm going to say I'm probably 98% organic myself. But uh, the main thing is don't overdo it. Don't feel like the more you put in there, the better it is because that's just not true. That's not true. Anyway, take your time. Uh, get, get, shoot me an email sometime. Go to my blog, felderrushing.blog. It has a big thing that says email me. Let's get a little dialogue going so that if you have specific questions, I can answer a little bit more in detail than we can here on the radio. But uh, also, you can visit the uh, the community garden there uh, at the corner of Highway 6 and 7 there in, in Oxford by the uh, across from the library. They've got a lot of really good raised bed organic gardeners right there who can who can give you ideas on what they plant and uh, and how they go about it. So between the extension service, uh, the community garden there, Oxford Community Garden, emailing me, getting in touch with Master Gardens, you got a lot of people who can help you out. Just don't feel like you got to overdo it. Take your time. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you. Appreciate your call. Ooh, job, I get that a whole lot. You know, I'm uh, what they call MO, mostly organic. And uh, if I use a chemical or synthetic thing in my garden, it's because I know that it's okay. On the other hand, a lot of natural stuff can cause problems. So kind of balance it. And uh, we can't know it all. Those of us who know a lot wish we didn't know some of it. But uh, we all get together. We all try to find a cons- – it's not black and white out there in the garden. It's we can all get along. And there's ways you can take advantage of everybody's knowledge uh, to get us through. So that's what we try to do here on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Uh, if, if I say something's wrong, somebody's going to straighten me out, and this happened before. Um, so anyway, during the week, if you want to shoot me an email, go to felderrushing.blog, B-L-O-G, not anything else. Felderrushing blog is how things says, email me, send me an email. I get this all the time. And while you're at my blog, take a look at my latest one I just put out yesterday on peat moss. How is it made? Where is it from? What are these weird insect-eating plants that grow out there? And why do I think it's okay to use a little peat moss in your garden, which I do? Anyway, I'm Horticulture Spell the Rushing. Me and Java Chapman and other folks at MPB, we're glad you joined us today. Look forward to chatting with you next week. It's rebroadcast on Saturday, and of course, we've got the podcast, mpbonline.org. Meanwhile, if you get a chance, farmers' markets are cranked up, garden centers getting cranked up, take a kid or a neighbor or a group of you, go out to a garden center or a farmers' market and pick up some stuff. And if you get a chance to show a kid how to do it, do it. Show us them how we do like get dirty this is an mpb think radio podcast to hear previous shows visit mpbonline.org or download the mpb public radio app to listen on your 